The best gift you can give your students is the tools to succeed. With Gaming Concepts Middle School, exploring life skills through scholastic gaming, you can equip your students with lessons in mental health promotion, independence, and general life skills using this authentic and engaging course. This program utilizes esports to engage students and teach them skills to help their transition from middle school to high school. Naturally embedded in these lessons are evidence-based mental health moments proven to increase student mental health. Our newest edition also includes the Rising Champions Package, a summer school curriculum with 20 ready-to-go lessons, absolutely free of charge. Gaming Concepts helps teachers dedicate their time to what they do best, teaching. So contact us today to learn more. Well, hello, everybody. How's everybody doing out there today? Hopefully, everybody's doing well. Heidi, thanks for joining me today. Happy to be here. Great, great, great. I am so glad that everyone is able to join us for today's webinar. Um, today, specifically, we're going to be talking about uh, middle school. And Heidi, I don't. Did you ever have you ever taught middle school? Not formally. Sorry. Give me one more sec. Can you say that again? Yep. Not formally. I didn't teach middle school formally, but I taught at an alternative high school, which is pretty similar in some ah. ways. That's funny. Um, yeah, so uh, Heidi's got some um, indirect middle school um, teaching experience. I taught middle school for five years, um, teaching technology and, um, and, and engineering um, at the middle school level. And so this is pretty cool. It's a pretty cool class. Um, Heidi, uh, before we get into introductions, we're just going to kind of chat for a moment here. Heidi was one of the main authors on this curriculum book and um, this course. Um, so it's really nice to have her to do this deep dive series. Um, we have wanted to do this one for a while. Um, if you've been, if you're familiar with our YouTube channel, um, we have all of the other books on there as a deep dive series. And so this is going to add to that collection of, of those. Um, so if you're interested in showing this to your administrators or your board um, or other stakeholders in your district, this is going to be the presentation for you um, and allow your those other people that might be involved in this decision or um, your own knowledge to know more in depth about what the middle school course has to offer. My name is Alex Herbie um, and I'm the uh, education integration manager for Generation Esports um, and I work alongside Heidi on the education team. Um, I've been here three years um, and before that um, I was a high school technology integration specialist um, and shop teacher and computer science teacher and esports teacher. And before that, then as I previously mentioned, I was a middle school uh, technology and, and uh, engineering teacher. Um, with me today is the very talented, very um, accomplished Heidi Albin. Um, Heidi, if you want to give a brief bio of yourself, that'd be great. Sure. I was a teacher for 14 years, and the four, first 11 years, I was at an alternative high school. And at this alternative high school, we were able to really push push the limit with innovation and what we thought was best for kids. And that's actually where uh, this gaming concepts curriculum was born. And I am now a writer with this with this company. And the school that we were at was also a two-time nationally recognized character.org national school of character and so as as we're going to see in this book that it, it's some pretty cool credentials behind the character education that has been put into this book yeah awesome so so this is going to be awesome because as one of the writers Heidi's note no is very has very good you know knowledge and of, of the depth and how this book works um I have read it I have have worked with it online uh, with our LMS and and kind of integrating it into an online space. And so I'm fairly familiar with it. And just to, you know, just to preview it, it is an awesome book. Um, it is a journey, I will tell you that, is, is the best way to sum it up. It is a journey for your middle school students, one that many students like taking. So it is, it's like playing a game through a story. Um, it, it's one of the best parts about this book. Um, and helping in that transition from, from middle school to high school um, and kind of all the problems that, that students face at the middle school level. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, let me figure out how to share this next screen here. Give me just a moment here. And here we go. I think I'm doing it. Heidi, you got my screen? Is that good? Yep. Perfect. All right. 
All right. So, uh, yeah, so this is going to be the deep dive into gaming concepts, digital life skills. That's just the name of the course. So if you're looking for what we're um, talking about today on our website, gamingconcepts.gg, um, it's the Introduction to Gaming Concepts Digital Life Skills. That's the middle school course we're going to be talking about today. If you've got any questions, please feel free to throw that in chat. That way, Heidi or myself can manage that as they come through, um, and we can get your questions addressed. So just please just throw it in there for us today. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Here we go. Okay. So the origin of the course. So gaming concepts, you know, the original course uh, started at the high school level where Heidi was at Complete High School Maze um, and, as a high school course. And so... We started with that, and then we built another course on top of that, um, kind of allowing the first course to aid in the success for students in the secondary course, which is a full year, uh, which is called interactive media. And once we had those two courses, we were finding that students were starting with too few skills to start the whole program. And so in order to build the program, like many of you could be familiar with a PLTW program, or if we relate it to sports, you know, a football program, you want to start them earlier than later. And so in the attempt to starting them earlier, we developed this middle school course. Um, so um, so what we're doing is we started to push fundamentals down to the middle school level. That allowed a career pathway and for students to align middle school esports, scholastic esports, and, and, and a course related to that into a CTE pathway or a pathway built by the build the high school building. That's kind of where we started. Heidi? All right. So this is this is my favorite book out of all the books that, that we have written. And what this course does is it uses esports to engage students and teach them skills to help their transition to high school. So this is life skills. This is how to be a good person, how to be a decent human being, how to live life. And why use esports for that? Well, the reason why, as, as any teacher knows, if you sit students down and you say, today we're going to learn about social skills, you're going to lose them and they're not going to pay attention. But if you say, hey, we're going to learn about video games in this in this video game course and you slip that um, those life skills in there and you slip that um, character lessons in there. They don't they don't really it doesn't it doesn't put it in that same kind of corny way that they tend to ignore. And, and so they love it. And so these lessons are focused on organization, perseverance, self-advocacy, self-regulation, time management, responsible decision-making, digital citizenship, social emotional learning. Um, and it, like our other courses, incorporates evidence-based mental health moments that we have data showing that those do increase student health, men student mental health determinants. And those are naturally embedded in the lesson. And so if you want to go to the next one, Alex, thank you. So this course is really fun because it, it runs kind of like an RPG, like a role-playing game, where the students start by creating their own character and they create that character after them after themselves, and then they assign the attributes to their character and they level up as they complete their coursework. And so the the writers, the authors on this book include um, a Milken educator and a national presidential awardee for excellence in mathematics and science teaching, as well as staff from that two time national school of character um, staff. So we know our stuff. We know how to take hurting students or students that maybe are lacking some of the life skills that we would hope they have. We know how to take them and in a meaningful way, teach them those skills in, in such a method that they enjoy and it sticks with them. So this book, like others, includes journaling with prompts that help students to reflect. It can be a, five, a 0.5 credit or it can be a full credit. It just depends. Um, I'll go into that a little bit more. It uses the skills learned from video games and relates them to life, which I'll show you in a second. It teaches internet safety. We go over interview skills, time management, talk about esports scholarships. There's so much in this book. So I'll just go and go to the next slide. So 
what's fun about this is the students create their character and then their character levels up in these different attributes, just like in an RPG game. So the strength and endurance attributes that's that students level up in, those are units that deal with mental, mental and physical health, nutrition and exercise, aspects of well-being, building resilience through positive relationships, mindfulness, gratitude, healthy thought processes, and helping others. Another attribute that students level up in is perception. And this is where they learn how they are affected by social media and online communities. They learn about internet safety, they consider recognizing the perception of others and being introduced to career opportunities. Go ahead and go to the next slide, Alex. The wisdom unit, where students level up in wisdom, they practice skills for staying safe, uh, accomplishing goals, navigating difficult situations. In the agility section, they refine their emotional intelligence, enhance digital skills, discover methods to organize and, and improve their lives. And then finally, in the charisma section, where they level up in that attribute, they learn about being a good friend and navigating relationships and teamwork and social interactions, how they present themselves to potential employees. Uh, they create a resume and they practice job interviews. And so it's a really comprehensive whole person um, that curriculum that addresses multiple aspects of well-being, um, physically, emotionally, mentally, and it's all done through the um, method of these students are, are start out with base stats, and then as they finish lessons throughout the unit, they level up in those base stats, and they get to actually see their growth, their personal growth, represented in their character. And I think that that's really awesome because it, in middle school level, we're 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 transitioning from, um, you know, playing a lot of games, a lot of hands-on activities, a lot of you know student-focused activities into middle school where there's a lot more do it on your own, and there's a lot more figure it out for yourself, and you know be your own kind of advocate. And this kind of aids a lot of students that struggle with that transition. Um, and allows them to succeed and build this program of strength, endurance, wisdom um, are the traits that we use in the book. Um, but those are just character traits that you can take for leadership, communication, um, critical thinking, strategy, things that that you know any student needs to have. Uh, and I think doing it in this kind of game way is kind of a is a really awesome idea um, and a really effective education. Uh, methodology. All right. So standards alignment. Let's talk about what it's aligned to, um, because everybody was like, "Well, it's great to have an esports class at the at the school, but what do they actually do?" Um, and so let's talk about that. So um, you know, when you talk about standards alignments, we know that every state has their own standards alignment. We know all too well that every state has their own standards alignment. Um, and all of our other courses are fully aligned to your individual states. Um, currently, the middle school book that we have relies on aligning to ISTE standards, Castle 5 standards, and national health education standards. Um, it is very easy to throw into some of these computer applications, computer literacy, um, you know, topics of technology, kind of these base level um, computer courses or technology courses that are at the middle school level um, and could easily supplement or replace what you're already doing. So uh, those are the standard sets that we align to. Um, over here to the right, you can see that these are possible national course codes um, that could be aligning to those, um, to those, to that class, to this class. Um, you would need to talk to your counseling department or or something like that to um, find out the full alignment, and, and we can help you with that as well. Um, but it's it's a course that's developed as we were all teachers, all of us are teachers here. Um, we know that the importance of standards and objectives based um, you know structure for the for the course, and so that is the the paramount. That is where everything starts is the standards and and what these students are going to learn. Um, one of the main keys of, of this 
program being so successful with students and teachers um, is the fact that it does embed mental health moments um, and social emotional lessening. And that is different from um, kind of the, the SEL lessening that you might be doing already um, or what most do um, in that a lot of times we stop instruction or we, we put SEL or mental health focuses into a silo. And students are disengaged with that. The teachers disengage with that. Heidi and I have both taught those things, those social emotional lessons. We hate it. They hate it. Um, and it's it, you just don't have any buy-in for it. But when you get a kid and they're talking about bullying and you're relating it to video gaming or toxic gameplay and you bring that up in class, everybody has had that experience that's in your class and everybody is able to share um, in that frustration, in that anger, in that um, you know, unpleasantness that has happened to everybody that's there because everyone has experienced it at some point or another. And so when you bring these mental health issues to light um, in a, through an esports lens or through a gaming lens with the teacher, then those can be teachable moments where your students can be turned into advocates, okay, instead of them being complacent about some things. Because we all know that a lot of times video gaming happens uh, independently or with friends outside of school. That's obviously, that's where it usually happens. Um, and if you get kids that are hearing all the time inappropriate language, um, racial slurs, ethnic slurs, just, just bad stuff in general, um, the best thing we hope that our students are saying nothing to it, right? And they're just ignoring it. But when you ignore it from a, a young age and you keep hearing it day after day after day after day, okay, you, you maybe start to learn that maybe a lot of people talk this way and that's okay. When you bring that into a classroom, you change that student into a advocate for the good. And you can have these teachable moments about what could you say to that person? How could you be a champion for this other person that's being put down online because they pushed the wrong button? Like everybody makes mistakes and how can you how can you do that? So the mental health aspect of this is an incredibly powerful point um, that really resonates with both two teachers and students. So, you know, gaming concepts, um, it, it helps provide self-esteem, self-efficacy and life skills in, in a nutshell. And these are these are throughout the curriculum, throughout the course. Um, and the only indicator that the teacher knows that they're happening um, are these logos and then kind of some directioning from us, some some instruction from us in the teacher manual. Otherwise, it's completely, um, you know, embedded where students students are just doing the lessons and they're just learning. All right. Purposeful play, that's a huge component of this also. Um, because purpose because this is an eSports class, a scholastic eSports class or, um, you know, an eSports education class, you know, you have to have some of the eSports part in it, right? And so um, that is some of the, the lessons that we have. Um, we focus on, you know, students being able to play the games that they have access to. So if your district is more locked down, it might be, mobile games on their phones, if available, if, if allowed. It might be board games. It might be internet-based games that they are able to access on their computer. It could be fully open and allow them to play esports titles like Rocket League or Minecraft or um, Super Smash Bros or something like that. Okay, it could be, it could be, it runs the gamut of, of whatever it could be. Uh, I've got some examples here of what you could cook, what you could play here. Um, for students, right? So we have some web-based games, games on a phone, uh, Chromebook games. You, students will play chess with this. We have an online chess component as well. Um, so there's a lot of different things, but it's not just about playing the game. That's just the hook. That's just the carrot, right? Um, we all know that reference, right, of, of having the carrot, right? That's, that's, the, that's the reward. But reality is that the reward from eating the carrot is the nutrition inside of it. OK, not just the not just the carrot. And so the nutrition of this is that they are understanding how the lesson that they learned earlier connects to these games. And then they journal about it, uh, bringing it full circle where they are reflecting and journaling about this piece so that they're building that knowledge base. They're building that deeper understanding of the content for better retention. Heidi. Hey. I love the carrot reference. Uh, another way that we look at it sometimes is it's similar to practicing band in band class. 
Few students grow up to be professional musicians. However, most of us understand that there is a value to having students use school time to practice their band instruments because they're developing other skills besides just the music musical skills while they're doing that. And so the purposeful play also functions as a environment for students to be able to practice practice their skills. But as we know from active learning, there's so many more benefits that come with that that are coming in behind the scenes. So just like the fundamentals course, this course can be used as either a turnkey course or a la carte. So a teacher can take it and it has prompts. It'll say, say this, say or paraphrase this, do this, do this, do this. And if the teacher wants to, they can follow it step by step and everything is planned out for them. However, teachers also have the freedom to use it in kind of an a la carte method where they can take certain lessons or certain parts of lessons and incorporate them into what they're doing. We have made it very um, flexible and open so that it can be as, as structured as you want, but it can also allow for a lot of individual um, instructor freedom as well. It can be adjusted to qualify as a full credit course it's, or a 0.5 credit course, just depending on how the, how the instructor wants to do it. We have also created the lessons to be flexible with timing so they can fit a one hour class period or they can be stretched to fit 90 minute class periods as well. Go ahead and go to the next one. So what I wanna show you here is a little bit about how this book looks and it's hard to see on this particular screen. So there's a QR code there that you can look at that will bring up these pages. If you go to page six on the document that comes up and this is a little mini sample of the book, you'll be able to see a list of the lessons that we have and some and, and a sample lesson. But as I said earlier in this book, students go through a journey to level up in life the way characters level up in a video game. So they start by taking a survey and they do some self-reflection and develop a personal inventory of traits. And then they use those results that they get as their character's base stats in the attributes of strength, endurance, perception, wisdom, agility, and charisma. Go ahead and go to the next one, Alex. So then students create a character avatar. Uh, they, can, they can draw it or they can also have do it online. So they create a digital avatar and then they record their stats that they track throughout the course. So as they do the lessons that level them up in their agility, they get to gain um, levels in attribute levels in agility and, and so forth. It's really fun. Uh, next slide, please, Alex. So these are some examples of just a few of the quests that students go through during this course to level up. And in each of these uh, quests that the students design for themselves, it is patterned after the way quests are typically presented in RPG games. So there's a quest name, there's a description, there's a quest giver, uh, then there's rewards. And then the students come up with a goal. They write out their objectives and they come up with a specific goal that they walk through during the lesson process to help them identify their measurable and observable goal. And then they log their um, continuation of their, their effort in achieving that goal and they use that to level up. Um, go ahead and go to the next one, Alex. But, well, real quick, what I want to say is that, you know, it's really important. This is a great skill for anybody to learn at an early age. Understanding how to write effective goals and objectives for yourself or even to think about them and them being correct in the in the way that they're worded and the methodology behind, you know, key objectives and phrases. Like those are really big level executive level thinking. And so getting students re, uh, used to doing something like this can only prepare them better for success later in life. Um, and that's what we're trying to build at an earlier age is for them to understand that they have ownership through these goals and objectives that they're setting for themselves and for them to build their self-esteem and self-efficacy um, into knowing that you know they, they can do anything. So exactly. And it's neat too, because the students can visual, visually see the progress that they're making in these soft skills. Students are used to being able to see their progress academically, but how do we show them, hey, you have learned how to have better 
responses to negative people? You know, how, how do you show that? How do you show a student when they're getting better in that? And this actually lets the students visually see how they are improving in different areas of, of their well-being and their soft skills. So there's uh, their strength, uh, physical activity, mental health, gratitude is one thing that they that they do and develop a gratitude practice. Um, we had talked about their attendance in school. And so we really try to address the, the student, not just academically, but from a whole student, whole person viewpoint. Right. And I want to mention to everybody out there that, you know, there are these sample lessons in, in PDF, PDF format. Um, you know, that's one way to engage with this curriculum is that you as a teacher could could get the PDF and work from it, but we also do offer it fully online um, in a in a in a very you know engaging and awesome LMS um, digital platform, whatever you want to call it, um, where students can directly engage with these lessons and activities. They're not just worksheets. They're not just PDFs on the internet, right? They they are fully built out activities um, that students can can uh, can really engage with. Um, all right, so let's talk about you know, some of this, right? This is this is very similar to what um, you might see online um, uh, on the platform. And so um, teachers are going to be able to see things like an overview, the objective that you can put on the board for your students, um, and the materials that are needed with links, you can just click right there. Most of the time, if it's something that can be done, it's replicated already within the system. If it can't be replicated into the system, we will provide you with those materials needed. Um, so you'll have an overview. Students will work. Students and teachers will work uh, top down um, through the pages, through the, the different sections of a lesson. Um, and the teachers will have a full list. You can see here um, instructions for the teacher that's only visible to the teacher that has all of the scripting, all of the questioning, all of the activities built out. Everything is for the teacher there. Um, you don't have to do anything but but be able to read it. So how you teach this course, um, this is something that we always get. Like I just mentioned, there's two, two uh, I guess, ways to teach it if we talk about the book versus online, right? So, um, but teaching methods, right? A lot of times what we prefer and, and what works best um, from, from our uh, research and from what we have seen um, doing this for a number of years with over, you know, 400 something districts with us, um, is that synchronous works best um, with that teacher in the room, guiding the students. It could be done virtual, and that's completely fine. Um, it really depends on the student's work ethic, um, but they're just not going to get as much of, out of it. Now, we do have some people that offer it both, right? They they have it for their students um, in class in a building, and then they also offer it just to make it, you know, fair for students that are, might also be virtual for that that district, they offer it in both both uh, both places. Um, and as far as how you teach it, right? Another way to as the how to teach it, right? Blended, traditional, or virtual. Um, you know, blended. You know, you can put as much as you want on the students. Have them come back to you as the instructor um, or as the facilitator, um, and kind of work it that way. Or the traditional, you're at the front, you're teaching them and then you release them for some things to work on their own and they come back together. Um, there's a million different ways you can teach this curriculum. Um, the only way that we know works best is that there's a teacher in the room. Class investment and outcomes, right? Um, so gaming concepts, this is just a small quote here, changed my perception of what teaching was and made me a better teacher. I'm pretty sure that's what I said. I'm pretty sure that's my quote that they used in this, this slideshow, um, only because um, I, I had never taught esports before, and, and and I don't know if any of if any of you on there. Please feel free to comment in the chat if you are um, a current esports teacher, or you're just looking into this, or you would have no idea. Somebody told you you need to be on this webinar, and you're learning it for the first time. But I was never an esports teacher. I was I was the teacher behind the desk um, that uh, do not approach my desk unless asked to. I was a real real strict teacher. Um, and that that just stemmed from from who I was and, uh, as a professional teacher. And when I started doing esports, it kind of opened that side of me up. That because I played video, I I played video games for a long time, for decades, and um, and I love video games. And I had never had that connection of kind of a personal connection with students. And it was it was really the best thing that I'd ever done. 
Um, not many students get super excited about, you know, you know, uh, computer science in a way that I'm excited about computer science or, or woodworking or engineering. Um, we just never were able to connect on that level. But video games is something is kind of a universal language with students. Um, and it was pretty, it was really awesome. Um, technical knowledge and staying up. Oops, what did I do? There we go. Technical knowledge and staying up to speed, um, communities of support, ask the kids. You don't need to know anything. That's the best part about this course, the next course, the next course. You don't have to know anything. We do all the lifting for the instructions, the videos, everything that you need to know on how to do this course, how to do the activities, how to do all the assignments. We have done all that for you and provided um, really, really nice, well done descriptions, instructions, um, and 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 uh, scripting for you. Um, also, ask the kids, be an ally to those kids, and and give them some leadership, give them some responsibility. Nine times out of the, out of ten, whatever we ask you to do with the kids in there, they have they have done some version of it maybe on their own. So um, you know some of the stuff deals with you know creating graphics for for YouTube, and kids, you might be surprised, you might have some kids in there that are actually really good at YouTube that you never knew. And so they know exactly how to do it and, and can do it pretty well. Um, and the best, the, the last thing there is just let's learn together, right? So, you know, if you're new to this and you're brand new, you're getting thrown into this as an esports teacher because your district wants it, or maybe you want to take this on, um, just learn together. That's the fun part is like messy learning. Like everyone learns together. And it's like, yeah, we never got this to work, but you know what? We learned a lot of ways on why it didn't work, you know, or what didn't work. Um, is kind of some of the most fun times that you have um, with your students is, is trying to really figure something out. All right, let's see. Technology, right? So the two most important letters in esports is IT, right? You have to have a supportive IT department to make esports work in your district. Um, if you'd like to have gaming concepts work and this curriculum work, um, it is less of a lift for your IT department, but you should always be um, friends with your ID, IT department because when you want to get to that next level, you want to start doing games that are esports games like Rocket League and Fortnite and Minecraft, uh, you know, and, and, and Super Smash Brothers. Um, they're going to have to be on board 100% because they're going to have to do a lot of networking, a lot of uh, white labeling, a lot of port opening, things like that for your room to to and your kids to be able to do that. There's a lot of different ways they can do that uh, that we can talk about. Um, you know, at the at the middle school level, your games are fairly limited only because of the publisher's age restrictions, right? But you can get on Mario Kart, Splatoon, Chess, Brawlhalla. Um, there are a number of others that you're able to get on, and some other ones that we will be announcing later this uh, later this semester um, for the middle school level for you to be able to engage with. Um, all of the software that we provide in the course is completely free. Um, you are never required to have any kind of purchase. You purchase the curriculum. You do not need to purchase any separate software. Now, if your district is already using things like Adobe or Microsoft or anything like that, feel free to use those tools if you are comfortable using them. Um, but, but everything we do is completely web-based. Um, whitelisting, I kind of talked about that, you know, whitelisting is where, you know, your IT department is going to open up things for you to be able to get to, um, on the internet. Accounts might be required for some of them. You know, there are some free to play games. Um, if you're playing in the tournament, we do offer a middle school tournament, um, um, as you know, middle school esports league, um, you'll need a generation esports account for that. Um, if you're trying to sell this to the district, you're trying to sell this to your building principal, excuse me, look for building um, equipment that needs to be or could be dual purposed. Um, when we started out with my esports program at the high school, we re reused the CAD lab that was being um, you know, phased out. Nobody wanted to do CAD anymore. And so we used the CAD lab as our esports um, starting point. But you know, you may already have a computer class. Um, you might be a computer teacher at, at, at that electives level where you could use those uh, machines in your computer class um, for one hour a day or for one class a day for this for this course. It does not have to be ex ex expensive. Um, you can run bare bones. You can run this book and a Nintendo Switch, and you can do this 
wonderfully. You could do this great um, because it's not always about all the RGB lights and cool chairs and jerseys and all that stuff. Sometimes it's just about the kids, right? And and the learning that takes place with this curriculum because it does work without all that flashy stuff. And that's the best part about it. Uh, and finally, uh, technology. Um, the <laughs> Mike, one of the main authors here is always his catchphrase, have you tried restarting it? Um, that's always a technology troubleshooting tip he likes to give. So that's why that's in there. All right, online learning. I'm gonna stop just for a second and, and pause while we're about halfway here. Has, does anybody have any questions? Anything that they'd like we'd like to they'd like us to go over again? Things that they're unsure of, things we sped past, you want us to go back to anything at all, just throw that in chat. Um, and we are more than happy to answer any questions um, if anybody has any at this time. While I get a drink. Excuse me. Okay. All right, good. Okay. So Gaming Concepts is available as a complete online experience for students and teachers. Um, you can see some screenshots here of, of what it looks like online. Um, it's pretty standard in terms of an online platform for learning. There's a you know course library. Um, the courses have a flow that students can work at self-paced or with the you know assistance of a of a teacher, and students can work and complete work online. Um, the LMS is completely designed by us. That's the best thing is that, you know, myself as an instructional designer and, and tech integration specialist for a number of years have dealt with a lot of LMSs. And we decided that it was really important to um, help to build one that was catered for teachers. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't reflect many of ones that you are used to, and that's on purpose. Um, because it's so much better built for a student, built for a teacher, um, and not necessarily built by by cor uh, some corporation. Um, and so it allows the students to have a much, much closer feel to the, to the uh, closer sense uh, to the curriculum because, um, you know, the teachers are the one crafting it. So it's very similar to um, what I would say is that if you're familiar with Blackboard or Canvas, your students are going to feel like a teacher did it. Like they created this course, it, it's been built in your building by another teacher, which it was basically just not in your building, right? It was created by me and Heidi and and Mike and Christy. So um, yeah, so it's a very awesome thing for you and your kids to interact with. All right, so what what is all this if there isn't any help for it, right? A lot of times you buy curriculum or you buy a technology or you buy software and you get a little bit of something like this you get a little webinar maybe um, and some pdfs but we we are not about that we are about helping you get through this and helping you be successful so we have a completely dedicated service team um, that is dedicated for curriculum and for tournament depending on what you need um, and you will be able to talk to a real person um, you will be assigned a real person who you can email you can call um, and they will talk to you almost at any time of the day, almost. Um, it kind of depends on their schedule, but pretty, pretty more often than not, they will pick up or answer you pretty quickly. Um, so like I said, your dedicated service agent will provide you with curriculum support, teaching support, tournament support. And who knows, you might get one of us if it's a really detailed question. Um, if you're like, I'm, you know, if it's really in the weeds about teaching, understanding, you know, the, the pedagogy behind this student that has a uh, a 504 and I'm trying to accommodate this using this lesson, then then maybe it might be one of us uh, helping you out with that question versus your your service uh, your service agent. But we are always glad to help with questions like that. Or um, I was just on a call last week with a teacher in Montana who who could not get their students for some reason were not like saving to the platform, and it was just because she had invited them all. You know, she had emailed out all the invitations, and then she told them to get on. Well, kids were starting to sign up already without clicking the email and so there's a little bit of back and forth and a little duplication and that's what was going on but um we you know we zoomed into our room and 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 got it fixed um right then every other week we do one of these awesome webinars so thank you for those of you that are here live with us um and we cover all kinds of topics like tech teaching funding coaching forums all kinds of stuff um, towards the end of the semester you'll hear from other teachers and students um, stakeholders in the program that have experienced gaming concepts and have taught it or learned from it um, and, and, and what they get out of it. Um, if you have any, if you want to see any of those, we do all those 
um, at the end, like I said, those are on our YouTube channel for Gaming Concepts. Speaking of the YouTube channel, uh, you can go ahead and subscribe there. Um, I believe that that QR code sends you right to the YouTube um, channel. Um, all of our training content is completely free. It always is free for you to understand how to teach this course. Um, we have an educator podcast. We have how-tos and instructor videos on there. Some of the videos that you'll interact with when the course are on our YouTube page also. So if you need to re-watch them or you want to kind of see some of the things about streaming or shoutcasting or interactive media, those awesome videos are on our YouTube page as well. So speaking of how we can help, how we can help, um, Heidi, why don't you take this one? So a cool thing that we do is we offer professional development because there's a general knowledge of how to be a math teacher. You can get training on that. There's um, courses in how to become an English teacher. There's lots of resources on being a social studies teacher, but how do you teach esports? How do you be an esports teacher or an esports coach? And we will we will come to the school and we will help you get this initiated, start this process, figure out all of the different things that you need. Uh, we have a lot of different areas that we can help with professional development in. Um, we show you how to introduce it to your school. We help you with the curriculum and the platform navigation. We will talk about how to foster inclusivity and you're creating your good esports culture. We'll do equipment specific training. We have eight other small sessions that you can kind of pick and choose and say, this is something I want. Or if you need something specific that we haven't thought of, well, we'll train you on that too. And the nice thing about this is that if, if you sign up for professional development, you'll probably get, get one of us. And we're teachers. And we've sat through years and years and years of professional development. And we know that the kinds of professional development that teachers hate. <laughs> and we know the kinds of professional development that teachers enjoy. And so this is going to be professional development led by a teacher for teachers, um, someone who has been in the classroom, who understands the, with food. the difficulties of being in the classroom and and we'll come to your school and we will we will get you going on this. We don't we don't just say here's here's the curriculum, have fun, figure it out. We will walk you through this. And that's one of the things that we really enjoy doing. Yeah. And at, at, at what's really nice about the, the PD is that um, you know, <clears throat> when it comes to PD, a lot of districts are putting a lot of investment in this. And they think that the investment comes into hardware and technology and stuff. But in reality, the the investment needs to be into the teachers. So, you know, if you're going to have a program that's going to be long lasting and it's going to provide, you know, mentorship facilitation across multiple buildings, across multiple levels, teachers need to be trained in how to do esports and how to do esports uh, curriculum, because you know it's one thing to have PD on a on a device, but then you just give it to the teachers and then they 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 forget it or they don't they don't use it to its full potential. I ran into that all the time, you know, as a as a tech integration specialist where teachers had we had Mac, we were one one MacBooks at my district, and teachers knew how to use the internet on it. That was basically it was a Chromebook, right? That's all they used. They didn't know how to use any of the Apple apps on there or any of the creative apps that were on there. Um, and so, you know, you got to invest in teaching people how to use what they got. Um, and we, we love doing that. And we always bring food. And that's the best part is that there's always food with us um, for, for PD because you got to have it. So any questions about PD, teaching, learning, anything like that? I'd love to field some questions if anybody's got one brave enough to ask out there. Pause for dramatic effect. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, all right. So a little bit here at the end, we will finish a little bit early today. That's perfect actually, because our timing for these videos is right at about 45 minutes. Um, and I can see that we're almost right there on time. I can definitely stretch us two more minutes on the last slide. So, um, you know, the last thing, if you still have, oh, no, that's my mouse. That's what keeps doing in my scroll wheel. Um, if you keep if you still have questions or you just want to chat, you can hit that QR code that will email us, I believe is what that goes to. Um, otherwise, it's just education at generationesports.com. Um, it's pretty simple. Our website down there, gamingconcepts.gg. Um, if you would like, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's where this video will go um, or later this week or early next week. Um, 
and I just want to emphasize, you know, gaming concepts, esports curriculum, esports lessons, scholastic gaming, all of these things. Uh, it, it's centered around how can we get students passionate about education again? Because a lot of students have lost that passion, especially not, I mean, it's it's one thing to be bored with electives, right? Or bored with core subjects. Every, that's one thing, right? That's been around for a long time. But electives are designed so that you can have some passion in learning, right? I was an electives teacher. That's why I'm going to be biased about this. So, you know, electives are meant to have that student passion in learning, right? And that hopefully can get the kids throughout the day of having to go to math and science and all that stuff. So, you know, this is an elective that can get students' passion into back into the building and back into your courses where they can learn something that can really help them. Digital literacy, character ed, uh, social emotional learnings, career skills, all of those are embedded into this curriculum. And if students are passionate about it coming in, then they are just going to absorb everything that you are giving them, um, especially if you're, if you're coming at it from an esports or video game lens. Because once they start knowing that stuff, you're going to see things start happening in the building where they're taking the skills that they learned in Canva or Photoshop or something like that, and they're applying them to a science project that they're doing outside of your classroom because they know how to do it and they listened. It wasn't that they were in Photoshop class and they had a lesson and then they were done and that's it. You only do Photoshop things in Photoshop class. Um, it was because they were passionate about it and they learned about it and they understood it that they can take that knowledge elsewhere and be successful with it. So that's my final thoughts. Heidi, do you have anything final you want to say about middle school curriculum, esports in general? I just think it's so neat that all four writers of this curriculum are teachers and we love kids and, and we care about kids. And with our background as as teachers, we we're not we're not trying to run a it's it's not a business for us. It's a it's a passion. It's what can we do to help these kids that we know are sitting in your classes, are you know are, are around the country and are just disengaged. And how can we address this attendance? How can we address the student engagement problems? And that's where all of this comes from. And we really believe we've we've come up with a very viable solution to, or at least way to address many of those those issues. So, if you want curriculum from teachers who love kids and and care about other teachers, this is the stuff for you. Absolutely, thanks so much, Heidi. Um, everyone out there, um, I really appreciate you guys being there. Um, for this. This has been awesome deep dive to understand the middle school curriculum. Um, if you want to check out anything else um, that we have on the YouTube channel, um, please do so. We have a deep dive on all now on all five of our courses that we offer at the at the middle school, high school level, um, as well as a ton of training videos and, and webinars like this. So um, feel free to like and subscribe there and visit us at gamingconcepts.gg. Um, again, thank you so much for everybody being here. Thank you, Heidi, for helping us with this, um, and we will see everybody next time.